We hope you will enjoy the following ranking. Please let us know your favorite in the comments and make sure to subscribe to never miss a good movie again. Number 5 You're different. Sooner or later, different scares people. Yeah. You think if you don't fight back, then maybe they'll like you, stop picking on you, calling you a freak. Victim or not, make a decision. Your son is a remarkable young man. It wouldn't surprise me if he has more in common with Einstein, Mozart, and Picasso than he does with us. He has highly advanced cognitive skills. The obsessive personality. Can our son lead a normal life? Define normal. Maybe he's capable of much more than we know. Say you're the head of the Sinaloa cartel. Who can you trust to track your stolen cash? He's capable of coming in cold, uncooking years of books, and getting out alive. Imagine the secrets this guy has. Who are you? Can our son lead a normal life? Define normal. Number four. Robert De Niro is a bounty hunter. Did your mother ever teach you how to talk nice to people and not shoot at them? Charles Grodin is an accountant who embezzled $15 million from the mob. It is truly in your best interest to just relax. I'm totally relaxed. I want this guy taken off. I want him taken off fast. The mob wants him dead. The FBI want him alive. I'm going to bring him into federal court. Do I make myself understood? These sunglasses, they're really nice. Are they government issued or do all you guys go like to the same store to get them? And his bail bondsman wants him in L.A. in 72 hours. They can't fly. They also suffer from acrophobia and claustrophobia. I'll tell you what, if you don't cooperate, you're going to suffer from fistophobia. Travo has a funny way of bringing people together. Oh, you're going to outrace the police car? You're going to outrace the police car. Jack, where are you? I'm in Boise, Idaho. <laughs> I'm in Anchorage, Alaska. Why would you do that? Oh, you enjoy yourself. This is my room, and that's your room. Good night. I was somewhere between Toledo and Cleveland. Oh, no, no. Come on, come on. Cigarettes are killers. Oh! Who the hell were those guys? Those are hired killers back there. I can't take this. Hired to kill who? Hired to kill this guy. You had this guy, what, four days? Uh... Oh! Look, you got five hours left. What are you doing? You promise you'll let me go this time? Remember me? Who is that? Agent Foster Grant. You're all right, Jack. Ah! Yeah, well, you're all right, too. Give us a kiss. <laughs> From the director of Beverly Hills Cop. What is your plan? You guys look like do a lot of traveling. Yeah. <laughs> Midnight Run. Number three. Excuse me. Excuse me. Are you Miss Eiffel? Yes. Am I interrupted? Yes. I'm the assistant your publishers hired. The publishers think I have writer's block. Do you have writer's block? I don't know how to kill Harold or Crick. This is a story about a man named Harold Crick. Harold lived a life of solitude. He would walk home alone. He would eat alone. When others' minds would fantasize about their upcoming day... Hello? Harold just counted brush strokes. All right, who just said Harold just counted brush strokes? 
Dave, I'm being followed. How are you being followed? You're not moving. It's by a woman's voice. She's narrating. Oh. Harold couldn't concentrate on his work. I can't think while you're talking. You have a voice speaking to you. About me, accurately, and with a better vocabulary. Harold found himself exasperated. Shut up! Cursing the heavens in futility. No, I'm not. I'm cursing you, you stupid voice. So shut up and leave me alone! So you're the young gentleman who called me about the narrator. The thing to determine conclusively is whether you're in a comedy or a tragedy. Have you met anyone recently who might loathe the very core of you? I'm an IRS agent. Get bent, tax man! Everyone hates me. Well, that sounds like a comedy. Have you written anything new today? I figured out how to kill Harold Crick. Little did he know that events had been set in motion that would lead to his imminent death. What? Why? Hello? Come on! This woman, Karen Eiffel, one of my favorite authors. And that's her. That's the voice. She's the narrator. Karen Eiffel, my name is Harold Crick. I believe you're writing a story about me. Is this a joke? You have to understand that this isn't a story to me, it's my life. I want to live. You need to speak to Karen Eiffel. I'm one of her characters. I'm sorry? I'm in her new book, and she's going to kill me. Oh. How exciting is that? Number two. You go public and 30 million people hear what you gotta say. Nothing, I mean nothing, will ever be the same again. Now the work we did here is confidential, not for public scrutiny, any more than our one's family matters. We're very serious about protecting our interests. He's got something to say, he wants to say it, I want it on 60 Minutes. Maybe for the audience, it's just voyeurism, something to do on a Sunday night. And maybe it won't change a thing. And people like myself and my family I left hung out to dry, used up, alone. What does this guy have to say? I don't be paranoid, Jeff. That threatens these people. That isn't cigarettes are bad for you. Who is this? <gasps> they have no right to hide behind a corporate agreement. He can talk, we can air it. The worst kind of an organized smear campaign against a whistleblower. Shoplifting, failing to pay child support. They can paint everything with that brush. What, what are you going to do now? You're going to finesse me, lawyer me some Mike. more? Try Mr. Wallace. If we aired this segment... I was told... Don't talk! Mind my own business. We could be a grave risk. We're doing this with or without you, Lord. Are you a businessman or are you a newsman? He's only the key witness in the biggest public health reform issue in U.S. history. Does he go on television and tell the truth? Yes. Is it newsworthy? Yes. Are we going to air it? Of course not. Why? Because he's not telling the truth. No, because he is telling the truth. And the more truth he tells, the worse it gets. You manipulated me into this. I fought for you and I still fight for you. The American public need to know. Jeffrey! And you wish you hadn't come forward? Dr. Wagon's deposition will be part of this record. You wish you hadn't blown the whistle? Jeffrey! Do I think it's worth it? I told the truth. It's valid and true and true. These people, that's not the point whether you told the truth or not. Number one. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard all the evidence. I submit that this was not a hot-blooded crime of passion. Consider this. A revolver holds six bullets, not eight. That means that he fired the gun empty and then stopped to reload. By the power vested in me by the state of Maine, I hereby order you to serve two life sentences back to back. One for each of your victims. So be it. Send you here for life. That's exactly what they take. I believe in two things. Discipline. Help me, God! And the Bible. Here you receive both. Andy came to Shawshank Prison in 1947. Why'd you do it? I didn't, since you ask. <laughs> you can fit right in. 
I must admit, I didn't think much of Andy the first time I laid eyes on him. He had a quiet way about him. A walk and a talk that just wasn't normal around here. There are places in the world that aren't made out of stone. There's something inside they can't touch. What are you talking about? Hope. Let me tell you something, my friend. Hope is a dangerous thing. Damn it, new friend, you're putting me behind! Hope can drive a man insane. You better be sick or dead in there, I kid you not! I better get used to that idea. Oh, my holy God. I guess it comes down to a simple choice, really. Get busy living, or get busy dying. Get busy living, or get busy dying. That's damn right. Do you agree with our list? Please let us know in the comments. And for more top 5 movie videos, be sure to subscribe to Community TV.